hello there. You played the wilds better. You played sword and shield, and now you're wondering, why does everything feel so different? I will answer that for you and show you all the moves Sword and Shield has in the Monsanto Wilds better. However, this is not a guide that will apply to the actual release, as everything is still subject to change. I will post a separate guide when Wilds is out, so make sure to subscribe for future guides, speedruns, and challenge runs, such as my entire Iceborne Sword and Shield only playthrough without wearing any armor. One change to Sword and Shield you will notice immediately is that they have completely revamped the standard attack combo. You will see a comparison between Iceborne and the Wilds better on your screens. It's a bit slower now, but comes with slightly higher damage, and most importantly, you can change your position while using it. In fact, you can go in any direction you want. This makes it a nice tool to patch up any positional mistakes very quickly. It's important to keep in mind that if you press down the input for a longer period of time, you will travel more distance. If you only tap the inputs quickly, you will barely move at all. I haven't found much use for the combo yet personally, so I think the better you get in a fight, especially in terms of positioning, the less likely you are to use it. Then we have the old lateral slash combo with a spinning reaper at the end. It's the exact same as in Monsanto Rise, Though, Spinning Reaper is much stronger in Wilds now and a tad quicker. It still lets you turn around into any direction you want, making it very comfortable to use. You also can't be tripped by using Spinning Reaper, which is nice. And Spinning Reaper can also be used at the end of the regular attack combo that I showed earlier. The Shield Bash combo you know from Monsanto Rise remains the same, though the KO values seem to have been nerfed heavily. If you played the base game of Monsanto Rise, you will recall that Shield Bash spam plus Metsushuri Yugeki resulted in a laughable amount of KOs, easily outshining Ham and Hunting Horn, though in a long fight against Stray Dao, I couldn't get more than 4 KOs. So you probably want to snipe 1 KO with it and then be done. Unless sharpness management is at an all-time low and we need the luxury of our shield to preserve our sharpness, I don't think it will be that good. Oh. Another new move in our kit? Yes, we now have the Charge Chop. It can be performed at any point in time, but gets empowered once you use it at the end of any of the previously mentioned combos. So, you will use it as a finisher in most cases. The damage output right now of the Charge Chop is very high and is part of the highest DPS combo, so you want to use this as often as you possibly can. And luckily for you, it also has built-in flinch free allowing you to ignore all the attacks that would knock you over, making this way easier to use, trust me. Though, I do have to say, the hitbox can be very wonky at times, so try to be as accurate with it as possible. Oh, 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 our old friend, the Perfect Rush. <laughs> Unless the values change in the official release, Perfect Rush will not see much use. Not only have the backstab iframes been nerfed, but Perfect Rush's damage output is just subpar. Currently, there's no reason to use it. Many people have already asked me in the comments, but in most scenarios, it's too slow at the moment, and if you manage to pull it off, you are rewarded with lower DPS than the other options. So, don't use it. We have talked about all the different options and combos Sword and Shield has in terms of DPS, but which one is the best in the current beta? If you have watched any of my runs that I've uploaded, you will quickly notice that I spam the lateral slash combo into Spinning Reaper, into Charge Chop, a lot. And that, my friends, is the highest DPS combo you're getting out of Sword and Shield at the moment. The numbers might change once Wilds releases, but this combo also heavily favors element and status, which neither Perfect Rush nor Shield Bash can say about themselves. So. I'm pretty confident that this will remain being our best option. Though, as with all betters, it's obviously subject to change, so don't take me for granted. Now, I'm going to quickly go over some additionally added features for Sword and Shield. Guys, trust me, the old Guard Slash is finally overpowered. Rejoice and... No, no, I'm kidding, it's still a meme. Please never use Guard Slash, it's bad. On a more serious note, however, we can now perfect guard, and even without any investments, we can perfect guard almost every single attack in the better. 
Perfect guarding means you have to press guard shortly before the move lands. And if you successfully pull it off, you can either use the sliding slash after by holding down block, or if you release the block input, you get a new relatively strong slash, which lets you combo into all the other options we have. I personally enjoy perfect guarding a lot, surprisingly, and I hope it's to see it still being good in the actual release. For some context, I absolutely hated Matsushuru Geki, but this feels really nice. There's a new feature called Wound Popping. I'm not trying to explain that now, but if you're trying to pop a wound with your focus attack, you can either chain it into the Falling Bash or a Downward Thrust. I recommend the Downward Thrust because it's incredibly fast, while the Falling Bash is very floaty, very slow, and unless you're going for a KO, I don't think you want to use it. The damage isn't worth it, and most of the times you're going to miss. My friends, that is all the information you need for Sword and Shield to go into Monster Hunter Wilds, and I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you so much for watching. Please make sure to subscribe so you're not going to miss out on the guide that I'm going to post in the future once Monster Hunter Wilds releases, and all the speedruns, challenge content, whatever, all the streams. I hope you don't miss them. I hope I'm going to see you soon again, and have a nice day to all my fellow Sword and Shield enjoyers. Bye-bye!